In this technical corner, we're going to be discussing solid ceramic end mills, and I'm joined by Peter Ward. Welcome, Peter. Thanks, Gio. Nice to see you. Now, at NTK Cutting Tools, you are, are, you are a major supplier of ceramic technology. Why would I swap my carbide end mill for a ceramic one? Right. It's a very simple reason, <laughs> basically. Um, this is a new innovation for us as well. Um, ceramic end mills have actually been around for quite a long time. I don't think anyone's successfully made them you know, consistently and worked on the technology to get them to work. So the main reason you'd uh, change from carbide ceramic is just cutting speed, metal removal rates. Um, the main reason to use ceramics ever is metal removal rates. And the end mill is no different. So uh, looking at speeds, um, again, carbide, I don't know, between 30 to 80 meters a minute, maybe for a carbide end mill on Inconel 718. We're looking a minimum of 300 meters a minute. Wow, wow. So, yeah. I mean, that's significantly faster. That's huge, yeah. It's massive. It's a transformation. We'd actually prefer to run nearer 600, but because end mills are quite small, obviously, small diameter, you have to work with the revolutions that the machine has. So that's that's sometimes a limitation. Okay then, Peter, if you can kind of, that's a big statement to make, if you could improve a process so drastically and obviously give your clients massive savings, not small savings, why isn't everybody using ceramic end mills? Um, I think it's to do with, again, people maybe don't know they're available now. Uh, it's maybe partly our fault. Um, it's an education thing as well, what's actually possible with ceramic end mills. Um, and availability has always been a problem, honestly speaking, in the past. They've been around, but not, you know, um, they weren't all that easy to get a lot of the time. But now we're stocking them, we have, you know, a reasonable range. Um, I think education as well is, you know, maybe the biggest thing. So when you say education, you know, me as an engineer, I've always been, uh, you know, educated on how to use a carbide end mill in yep. regards to feeds, speeds, programming. Yep. Um, and I, I know the longevity of that carbide end mill. You know, have people got a misconception about ceramics in regards to the longevity, the speeds, the feeds, the programming? What, yeah, what is it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's, it's very easy to have a bad experience with a ceramic end mill. C certain things, like all ceramics, people have to pay attention to the process and uh, the part and the way you hold the end mill, things like that. Again, as we've spoken about in the past, it's all about the breaking strength of the, of the end mill. So things like the way you hold it, it's got to be a precision collet, a shrink chuck, something like that. Because it's a brittle material, the way you hold it is critical. It's got to be held in a precise way. So you, you, you mentioned it being brittle. Obviously, ceramics are very brittle. They're very hard. And, and, and some people may think they're very fragile. Do mm. you still get the same tool life? From ceramics? Uh, you probably won't get that long tool life carbide gives you. But again, when you're using ceramics, it's never about tool life. You know, a lot of the conventional things that you're looking to for from, uh, from a carbide insert, long tool life, surface finish, chip control, they're nothing to do with ceramics a lot of the time. We're about metal removal rate and about drastically, you know, transformationally reducing the cycle time of a part. So is it for roughing operations and also what kind of applications would you say, right, that lends itself to ceramic? We do all the same. I mean, we're talking strictly about two materials, really. We're talking about heat-resistant superalloys, zinc canal, hastel oil, those, those type of, 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 sort of aerospace materials, and cast iron. Those, those are the two applications. Um, the applications in terms of the of, of its use are exactly the same as carbide end mills, slotting, side cutting, all the normal you know end mill operations, just but you know that much faster. The other thing you have to pay attention to is is the program as well, because we're looking at um, stopping shock loading to the end mill because it is brittle compared to carbide. We're looking at uh, being careful into the corners of parts, you know. Tr trochoidal programming. So you'd peck corners out, um, no sudden increases in depth of cut, things like that. You know, so it's always thinking about the programming to protect the brittle material. So there, it's, it's a process change, like we mentioned, Peter. So you kind of, you know, you're running dry. You, you, you're running dry. No, we're only using 
dry so you can see it, to be right, honest. Okay. So we still use... Uh, uh, so you can run Oh, yeah, run cover. Yeah. So now we're mentioning then materials yeah. and the different materials that your ceramic end mills lend themselves to. Do you have different grades of ceramic dependent on the material in the application? We do. I mean, in the case of end mills, it's just uh, all the grades of Cylon because Cylon is the toughest of the of, of the ceramics. Um, you can use a reasonable feed. Uh, that's why we use the Cylon. Um, and that helps with the cost as well because Cylon's obviously a, it's a much lower base uh, material than say Whisker or Bidemic is. So it's an ideal material for end mills. And is it safe to say then, Peter, I'm going to wrap this one up, is it safe to say if you can introduce ceramic end mills to your application, you will see drastic uh, cycle time reductions. Absolutely, yeah. There's no, yeah. We always say that we're very honest to people. If it is, if it hasn't had a transformational effect on your production, use carbide. Yeah. Peter, thank you very much. It's yeah. been an education. I hope it's been an education for you. If you're looking to save time and money, if you, you you're cutting some of these exotic materials that Peter mentioned, get in touch with NTK. Yeah.